So it's been some time since I could get out to my usual stomping grounds out here in the woods, but uh, I was able to get out today and I had a couple things I wanted to make videos of and one of them was something I've been wanting to try for some time and that is a low carb version of a blueberry crumble except it's not going to have any blueberries in it, it's going to have huckleberries in it. If you're interested in seeing what that turns out like, keep watching. All right, so what is a low carb version of a blueberry crumble? So I, I have made something similar to this in the past and I have some videos, which I, I think I'll throw the link to the end of it. But this is specifically made with a, as a low carb version. So normally a crumble where berries would be on the bottom and then you would have a coating on top Often it's made with oatmeal, sugar, some other ingredients to go in it. Well, on a low carb ketogenic diet, neither oatmeal nor sugar are permitted. Now there are sweeteners which are calorie free, which I'll be sharing with you what I'm using, but uh, I needed something to replace the oatmeal. So I've come up with some ingredients that will work that are keto friendly. In other words, they're low carb and actually taste really good. But the other thing is blueberries are now out of season. I did see occasional blueberries on my way in, but uh, not enough that it would make sense for me to look for them to make this meal. But what is in season is the huckleberry. And personally, I prefer the taste of huckleberries. So what is a huckleberry? Well, uh, I need to pick some for this meal. So why don't we go and do that now? And then we'll come back and I'll show you how this will be assembled and how we're going to bake it. All right, this looks like a pretty good spot for some huckleberries. They're all through here. I'll give you a close up in a moment. Uh, yeah, so normally the huckleberries, they grow on bushes that are mostly, I'd say, knee height to waist height. Here, they're chest height, which is makes it much easier for picking, of course, but uh, that's not common. Commonly they're, they're a little bit lower. I guess it depends on where they're growing, how much they have to work to get up towards the light. Uh, yeah, they, they look a lot like a blueberry, as you'll see when I give you a close-up. Even the leaves do. They look like blueberries. A lot of people think of them as black blueberries, but they're not, of course. I will put the Latin name on the screen. Um, and the reason I'm going to do that is because there is another variety of berry referred to as huckleberries. I believe it's on the west coast of North America. It's a different berry. It is also edible, but it's not the same as this one. So just for clarity, if you're going to do a little research on picking huckleberries, they're easy to identify, they're safe to consume, but it's always good to double check what is available in your area. So let me just pick a couple here. Now they're, this makes picking so easy because they're right here. I don't have to reach down, bend over to get them. They're a little bit more spaced out than you would find blueberries lower down on the ground, but they're plentiful. This year seems to be an especially good year for them. And it doesn't take long to get enough for what I'm going to be making for dessert. So they're all over here now. Let me just put this away for a second so I can give you some close-ups. All right, why don't I pull one off of the branch here. And come up close. So there's the huckleberry. You can see it has a little crown, a little calyx on the top of the berry, just like a blueberry, a little short stem attaching it. The leaves are very similar to a blueberry, maybe a little bit bigger, but otherwise, uh, you know, you'd be forgiven for thinking this was an extra tall blueberry bush. It is not, of course, but uh, yeah. And these, oh my goodness. If you have them in your area, become familiar. Two reasons. One, after the blueberries have gone, the, you know, whether they're past season, the animals have gotten them or people have picked them, that's when huckleberries really come into their own. So you can extend your berry foraging season that way. Mm, love them. Love them. Now there is another berry. I'm going to refocus the camera. There is another berry and it just happens to be growing right next to these that I want you to see because it's not poisonous, but it's not edible. I 
Okay, so this berry, and it's literally mixed in with the huckleberries, is known as the mountain holly. And the mountain holly has this nice, I don't know, a dusty red color to it as it ripens. And the reason I want to show you that is because if you're not familiar with what you're, what you're harvesting, then you could easily mistake these for the huckleberries at an early stage. The huckleberries will go through a green, yellow, red, purple before it's finally turning black. The mountain holly's not going to, it's going to stay the same. That's its ripe color right there. And I've tried them just to see. Uh, if you try it, you'll spit it out. It's not going to harm you, but it is so much pucker power to it that it is not something that's edible. It's not palatable at the very least. I don't know it to be poisonous, but you're certainly not going to want to eat it regardless. So I just wanted to point that out only because they're growing right in amongst the, the huckleberries. Normally, this type of thing grows on a, a small tree, a large bush, quite a few feet higher than this one is. All right, let's get these berries back to the campsite and we'll turn them into a delicious dessert. Great, so now I have just over about a half a cup or so of my huckleberries. And so now we're ready to put this meal together. So what I'll do is I'll reposition the camera. I'll take you down to my work surface here on the forest floor. We'll put the meal together and then I'm gonna share with you how I'm gonna cook it. I've not done this before, this specific setup. And it's something new that uh, I'm interested in showing you and getting your thoughts on at the same time. So I'll reposition the camera and we'll go from there. All right, as I prepare this dessert here on the forest floor, uh, just off to my left out of sight is my Bushcraft Essentials Bush Box XL heating up with some charcoal because it's still under a fire ban, believe it or not. Big rain coming this week. Um, hopefully that'll be enough to wet the forest down so that I can get back out and work with the number of stoves that I have. But for today, it's still going to be charcoal, which it looks like it's ready. So I'm going to have to get moving with this. So I'll show you the setup in a minute that I'm going to be cooking in because as I said, I have not used this before. But the I'm actually going to assemble it inside of this pan. This is the pan that came with my 12 centimeter zebra. And I'm actually going to be using a 14 centimeter zebra brand new to me it has not even been over an open flame yet as you'll see but this will fit inside as i'll explain but so that's where the meal is going to go so to start with i'm going to put in my huckleberries all but a cup i'm going to keep just keep up maybe a half a tablespoon out at the end because i want to just throw them on top as a bit of a, a dressing on top so on top of that i'm going to put my sweetener and i'm going to save a little bit of the sweetener but the sweetener in this case is a zero calorie sugar replacement known as monk fruit mixed with erythrol so good safe products to use and in my opinion the best of all the artificial ones that are non-sugar ones that are out there so I'd save in a little bit back to use uh, on, on in the mixture itself that goes on top of the berries. And uh, yeah, so that is the base. Now, what goes on top of that, oh yeah, I guess I should kind of mix those around and kind of get things done quickly here so I don't waste the heat that's developing in my stove, but you can't skip the steps and expect it to work. Ah, I'm losing berries. All right, so the sugar is kind of mixed around. Now, the sugar not only does it sweeten, but actually draws moisture out of the berries so that they'll be nice and juicy when we uh, go to eat them. So I'll put those aside for a second. I have a small bowl here. And the primary ingredient for the crumble, and this is what replaces oatmeal normally, is uh, pecans. Now, I have some broken up pecans here. Pecans, pecans. Not sure. It depends, I guess, where you live. And they have to be kind of munched down. If I was doing this at home, I'd be using a food processor for what I'm about to do. But since I'm not in, at home, uh, I have to improvise and do a little bushcraft. So I just grabbed a short stick, made a, like a pretzel for a mortar and pretzel. And I'm going to crunch the, the pecans down a little bit more. Not into a full meal, but just smaller than they are now. And I'll save you watching me do this. The whole thing but just uh i'll kind of show you where you can start to see where it's working already see if i can bring that up so you can see it's getting powdered a little bit here and that's just from crunching them in with the stick so i'll continue doing that it'll take me a minute so i'll just cut away come back when that is 
ready for the next step. All right, I think I've got most of the nuts ground down now. Just a little bit coarser than a, a meal, much coarser than say a flour would be. Kind of what you would get if you did this in a food processor. Let me show you. So that's what the nuts look like now. So um, I haven't mentioned any amounts of ingredients because it's gonna be relative to the size of the meal. So what I will do in the video description is I'll give you exactly what I use for the amount that I'm making, but I'll give you the full recipe that was originally made with the blueberries. So you can have both and then decide how much you need to make. So what comes next? So into that, I'm gonna throw some almond flour and some ground flaxseed meal. Just a small amount, it's about a tablespoon of each. I'm also, let me mix that through, I guess. So that's kind of distributed around. A little bit of cinnamon, because cinnamon does wonders for this type of a meal. I probably put in a half a teaspoon there. Mix that around. Okay, I have two little containers with lemon juice and, yeah, that's my lemon juice, throw my lemon juice in, and vanilla, vanilla extract. Yeah, throw that in. So, not, a, not quite a teaspoon of each, I guess. I have another container with cream, heavy cream in it here, but that's not going into the meal. I think it's still good. It's been shaking around. I think it's starting to thicken up. That's going to be going on top as a dressing on top of it. So I'm mixing around those wet ingredients into the nuts mixture that I have in the bowl. All right, folks, a quick apology. I looked up and suddenly the, the camera was off and I had run out of battery. I've actually never run out of battery with this camera before, but uh, I did today. So I had to do a quick change of the battery and then figure out where I was before the battery uh, ran out on me. So I was at the last ingredient and I was about to say that my last ingredient is butter where I don't have butter with me today. I have ghee. Ghee is clarified butter. And I find it travels well in the woods, does not require refrigeration, and uh, tastes pretty darn good too. So I need to clean that spoon off just a little bit. Get some ghee. I'm throwing in about a tablespoon of ghee, maybe a tiny bit more. And that is going to get mixed in. I think I mentioned if I, if I was at home, what I would be doing here is throwing all these ingredients into a food processor and just combining them all at the same time. But of course I don't have, well, this is my food processor, a bowl and a spoon. All right, so that is all mixed through. I think as good as it's gonna get, it looks pretty good. I'll bring my berries, my huckleberries back into frame and kind of dish it out on top. Try to spread it around a little bit. It will spread a little bit on its own, but not too much. So I'm trying to, as much as possible, get this spread out. Oh, it's looking pretty good. So I have made this with blueberries at home in the oven, but I have not made it out here in the woods yet, and I have not made it with huckleberries, although I've eaten plenty of huckleberries in my time. All right, I think that will do it. There's what I have. There's my crumble on top of my huckleberries, and now they're ready to go in my oven. So let me show you that. All right, here's my oven for today. My brand new 14 centimeter zebra billy pot with the clips on the side. I bought it from a company here in Canada, the Canadian Outdoor Equipment. It did not come with the thermometer. This is something that I added myself. I found a thermometer at Home Depot which is very much, if not identical, to, very much like, if not identical to the one that Steve at Firebox Stove uh, sells. So what I did is I followed his instructions on, on his YouTube channel on how to install it. It just goes on very simple, 3 8 inch drill. Bit of work to get that through the cover, but once I did, 
I was able to throw this on top. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'm going to use today to try. Now, I'm also going to do something else that's a little different for me. I'm going to be throwing, not throwing, placing some stones inside. So I have a small bag. Is that my bag of stones? Nope. This is my bag of stones. River stones that are washed and cleaned and all ready to use. And I'm going to be putting them in the pot as a thermal mass. So what happens is this is this will do two things. One is it will hold heat in the oven so that each time I open the oven door I don't lose all my heat and have to start from scratch again. It'll also distribute the heat a little bit and absorb the heat obviously so I don't get warping of the pot. Now I, I in my using the other pots I don't get much in the way of warp, warping but this is one way of making sure that you don't. I don't think I need all the stones that I have. Then I'll throw in a handful. So don't use river stones fresh out of the river. You probably already know this. You don't want uh, stones that have water soaked inside of them that could uh, quickly blow up, literally blow up inside of your pot uh, because of the water that's trapped inside of the stone. So these are well dried. I've had these for out of the water for a long time. You don't need a lot. There we go. Okay, so I've got a good size handful in there. So now I'm going to take my little grill, put that in top of the stones, and when I get up on the top of my, my bush box, uh, then I'll place the rest of the meal in. I want to preheat the oven, so I'm going to do that. Close the lid, and uh, yeah, we'll get this up on top of the bush box. Don't let anybody tell you that charcoal doesn't get hot enough to cook with. <laughs> this is smoking hot. I mean, I'm having trouble getting in here to get some coals out. It is hot. Gloves are definitely required. So I'm going to pull out a few pieces of... Uh, charcoal to place on top of the stove. That should work. Three pieces. And now I have to get some burrs on top. One thing I've noticed about using the bush box, uh, it's different than using the fire box. The bush box, the uh, all four sides are pretty much the same height. So it doesn't work setting the uh, the belly can on top. doesn't work quite as well as it does on the fire box. So I have these pot stands, which are, that is hot, uh, kind of custom made. Here we go. So they have a little taller uh, offset to them than the, the ones that come with the stove. So that'll work. Now, something I'm noticing, and tell me if you've experienced this, if you have this same setup. Let me get that up on top here. Um, I have the handle a little bit at an angle, and the reason being is um, if I have it straight up and down, then the weight of the thermometer causes the can lid to slide right around. So if I want to keep the thermometer at the top, which of course I do, then I need to kind of tilt it off a little bit. So it's a little bit different than the way Steve shows it occurring. Uh, that's no big deal, right? We work with what we have. Oh, that didn't work. Like that, I guess. As I said, I've not used this setup before, so this is a little different than anything I'm used to using, so there's still some learning going on. It's going to take a few minutes for that to come up. So how hot do you want this? Well, the recipe calls for a 400 degree Fahrenheit or 200 degree Celsius oven, and I used that at home with my home oven, and it worked out well, and it was just 15 minutes cook time. So I see my temperature rising very quickly right now and uh, when it gets to be about 400 degrees then I'm going to slide the crumble in but uh, that's what I'll do is I'll turn the camera off for a few moments and then come back when it's ready to put inside. All right uh, I'm noticing that uh, okay the temperature is really starting to climb now but it took a while before the temperature really started to move up on the the dial. Uh, I suspect that's because all the rocks inside of the can had to really start heating up before um, that, uh, you know, really started to take hold. So it's not quite where I want it to be for cooking purposes, although it's getting close. But I'm going to try and get the meal in now. 
Uh, this is a little tricky. Steve makes this look so easy, but uh, the idea is that you open the lid. Whew, some heat in there, isn't there? I'll get my meal ready. Put it on. Fits in there nicely. I'm trying to do this without dropping. There we go. Any of the briquettes. Oh, I didn't get that locked on right. Trying not to lose the briquettes that are on top of the stove. There we go. That's better. I mentioned you need to have that near the top so it doesn't slide down. All right, so 15 minutes, I'll bring you back, see what it looks like. All right, so I don't mind telling you that this was a bit of a learning curve for me. Things that I will do differently last time. So about three quarters of the way through the time that I let it cook, I noticed that I was running out of heat from below. And at the same time, the coals I put on top had gone out. So I transferred them into the bottom and uh, gave it an extra five minutes cooking time and the heat has risen dramatically. Uh, I never did get to the Magic 400, although I'm just about there right now, but uh, it's been in 20 minutes at least, so I don't think I'll let it go any longer. Let's see if I can get this out without making a mess. Oh, it's definitely cooked, there's no question there. Yeah, just bubbling away. Hopefully that's showing up on camera. Look at that. Okay, this is hot, very hot. So I'm gonna have to set this down and let it cool off a little bit. I'm not sure if I'm gonna transfer it into my bowl or eat it directly from this, but I've gotta give it a few minutes to at least stop bubbling before I dig into it. And that's when I'll bring it back. All right, just like all oh, the best laid plans, things happen when you're out in the woods. I was sitting in my hammock chair and I was just about to hit record and the hammock chair let way. Uh, one of my knots wasn't uh, as well, as good as it should be. So I hit the ground. The good news was that I did not spill either my coffee or my dessert. The bad news is I got a few pine needles and the like inside. So, you know, I can take that. I don't think there's anything that shouldn't be in there. No, nope, looks pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna show you what the dessert looks like and then I'll put the final finishing touches on it bring the camera down so I did transfer it into my bowl as you can see it was a little bit too hot to hold that little stainless steel pan as a result some of the crumble is mixed in instead of sitting on top what I, I found was that uh, when I did this at home more of the crumble stayed on top so Despite the fact that it was only reached 350 degrees according to the thermometer, I think it actually got much higher because more of the bubbling took place and consumed the, the crumble, the topping down into it. So it um, won't taste any different, just looks a little bit different than you might do it if you're doing it at home. I'll put that up a tiny bit higher. So what are the finishing touches? All right, so I have a few, half a dozen or so, of the huckleberries and I have my cream, my heavy cream. So this adds to the keto nature of the meal. And the keto, the cream is quite thick now. That's from being shaken up in my pack. It's not gone bad. I checked that. You know, if you've been denying yourself cream because you think it's bad for you, stop. Enjoy it because heavy cream is one of those few treats that you can have, especially if you're on a keto diet. It's really a healthy thing to have. All right, so here's what we have now. We have some cream and a few more berries on top of the crumble. Let's give this a taste, except for that pine needle. I get it? Yeah. Okay, my first response is, I'll make this again. Yeah, I will. And again, you know, when you eat raw blueberries and raw huckleberries, 
there is a difference. They're both sweet. I think huckleberries are sweeter, a little bit tastier, but there's definitely a difference. But when they're cooked, I don't think I could tell the difference. If somebody told me this was a blueberry crumble as opposed to a huckleberry crumble, I don't think I'd be able to tell the difference at all. Mmm. Okay, despite the fact that I was trying something new with the, the uh, zebra billy pot on top of the bush box, with the rocks and all of that, something I know Steve Despain does all the time, but this is my first time doing it. Probably not the best time to do it when you do it on video, but despite the challenge I had figuring out how to do that, it worked out really, really well. This is actually such a simple meal to put together. You could, I could have easily, and I'd recommend you might want to consider doing this. Instead of making the crumble out here in the bush and mushing it up with the sticks, the nuts, you might want to do that at home. Just bring everything out mixed, ready to go on top. I just wanted to show you me assembling everything at the same time. Other than that, pick a few berries, put the crumble on top, put it in an oven of some type. You can do a much simpler oven than what I tried to do today. Not tried, I did do it. And uh, this cooks all by itself. There's really no tending to it, nothing else. It's just an easy meal to make. Now, this is a low carb or keto ketogenic version. I wanted to show this as an option, but you can use this with any regular uh, crumble that you want with any berries that you think might work. Uh, just do it. Get out in the woods and give it a try. But if you're into a low carb ketogenic diet, that's the recipe I'll be putting in the show notes below. Mm. Oh yeah, coffee, Rampage coffee. Wow. Oh, I gotta show you this. So I was out at my thrift store, Value Village recently, and uh, look what I found. It is the GSI French press, and it came with the mug and everything setting inside. I think I paid two dollars for it. Sometimes you just get lucky. And I was looking for a smaller French press. I think that's 750 mils total, so three cups. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd bring it out and give it a try today. You just have to grind your coffee a little coarser so you don't get it full of silt as it pushes through the filter. Packs down nice. And this made a nice cup of coffee. Still got some pine needles. All right, so this is how you enjoy a late summer afternoon. With a wonderful dessert and a perfect cup of coffee and the sun just moving down towards the west. Doesn't get any better, I don't think. Okay, folks, if you have any comments on the recipe that I used today, if you have a different recipe in the low-carb ketogenic version, I'd be interested in knowing what that is. Uh, if you have any questions about this or you have any suggestions for future meals and desserts, put those all in the comment section. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.